certain situation. What I care most about is like, I want someone to be able to control that, like all the way to there. Then we actually squeeze the glutes to get the abs off the bench and then pull. All right guys, so this is number two video. I'm with my man Ben here. Knees over toes. And now we're gonna work on, everybody works on extension, we're gonna also work on flexion. This is gonna be really good for jiu-jitsu practitioners. And Ben's gonna run me through his circuit that he does for flexion. Ben, you wanna take it away on this one? Yeah, so if we think like, okay, we wanna be strong at our ankles, like extending and our knees extending and our hips extending. So maybe you've heard the phrase like triple extension. Mm -hmm. And it's so like every step on the sled, triple extension. But what about the opposite side of this? So that's where I find a huge advantage. This stuff changed my life. So this, this is my main accessory exercises. The sled is my foundation. The ATG split squat is the second most important to me. Then we get into accessory exercises. So this is a, this is a Watson tibialis trainer. This is allowing him to load the weight onto his toes. Now, if he sits back a touch to where his ankle is out ahead of his knee, now he's able to get a full stretch there. So if you imagine Michael Jordan jumping from the foul line, he's reaching that heel out, boom, a ton of force is coming through. So we find this helps everything from ankle to shin splint to knee. So he now has measurable load. With this machine, I like an athlete to be able to do at least 10% of their body weight on each side for 10 reps. And then a good friend of mine made this. This is extremely helpful. This one also 10% of body weight for 10 reps. So this is allowing me to get the same stretch and then strengthen. This is home gym guy, iso tip. So I think these should be in every rehab facility. Um, how tough was the 10% for? Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. Real tough. So for most people, it'll take probably a year or more of consistent training to get to 10% of body weight for 10 reps. So I can just barely do it. And I'm a you know genetic shit athlete, but probably less than 100 athletes could do that. Yeah. Usually only a genetic freak do 10% for 10. People, people will really neglect the tibialis. We're going obviously more that pronation or you know, yeah. plantar flexion, I should say. And when you're going through the motion, but you never really work on those flexion, you're working on supination and things like that. Yeah, this load and stretch there, we find that it really makes people's knees feel better over yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. So getting that stretch there. So that was just working the opposite side, not our cast, the opposite side. Now let's jump right into behind the knee. All right, so I know my stuff pretty well. I think he's gonna be able to do one live. Uh, we are really trying to be able to control that knee joint all the way down. So like still fighting, still fighting, still fighting, still fighting, still fighting, still fighting all the way. And then I'm trying to squeeze my glute and pull up. So that took me two and a half years to do as a genetic shit athlete. I think he can do it. We're gonna try. We are gonna do it. Do a fight and then take a good full break so you can fully refocus. Gotcha. Okay. This guy's got some amazing hamstrings. Don't try this at all. Yes, great job. Good, refocus. Yep. Me, contract the glute, yep. Uh, woo. You see this here? Yeah. This is so you can elevate the bench. So actually, you can elevate the bench on Olympic weightlifting blocks or anything sturdy, and then you can make it easier and do it. Why don't you start from the bottom, try to get the way up. The way down, you did really good. Start relaxed, then contract the glute. And then, yeah, 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 oh. Brutal exercise. If I would have started this when I was like 12, I would have been flying, I don't know. So we find that the, the best one foot jumpers tend to be free sitters. So I was at a Charles Poliquin seminar. Yeah. He's trained Olympic gold medalist long jumpers. Yeah. And I said, what's the secret to one foot jumping versus two foot? And he said, it's eccentric knee flexion. So for a fighter, he also would say that this relates more to how hard you can kick mm -hmm. than how hard than how strong your quad is. Now, obviously, we want a strong quad, yeah. and that that split squat that we do, you're directly like you're in here, and you're directly working that way. Gotcha. And then on the sled, we're working that way. So we want to be strong here, even through the tibialis, the last thing we did. But now, the stronger you are here, uh, apparently, you can let out more force. I guess similar to like why that you'd want to be strong here in the back to throw a baseball. Yeah, this is, this is no joke. Big glute contraction first. Yep, your chest will come off first. 
Yeah, like that, exactly, and then pull. Exactly, exactly. Yep, 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 pull! Oh, ah. Like this. Yeah, like that. Oh, ah. look at this. You so, gotta give me a week. Look at this. Now, but what if I gave you, what if I said do that once a week for five years? That's oh, basically man. what I did. Yeah. That's why I'm really athletic now. Gotcha. So you you could be a freak and kick my ass because you have even more muscle. And if you get good at that, so if you get strong people good at that, yeah. you're gonna beat the shit out of people. Yeah. We keep it really simple, but every rep we're chasing the perfect rep, chasing the perfect rep. Sure, yeah. And I will show how this can regress. So the most important, even if you never work up, the most important is just that control there for the knee. But if you can contract the glutes, and then pull, yeah. then you can probably run faster, jump higher, give you a strict measurable. But here, you can you can lift up the angle. So now, now here it's easier yeah. to pull. So yeah. it's actually surprising how people can do this once you regress it. Once you treat the Nordic the same way you would treat any exercise. Yeah. If someone can't bench 225, you don't just keep putting 225 on it, having them hurt themselves. Mm -hmm. So the Nordic is very misunderstood, but actually elevating it, it's very easy to progress. Yeah, that's amazing. Good. Big jump. Yep. Ooh, ooh, no, no, you got it. Speed. Speed. Wow. You're, you're tired. tired They're so fast twitch. That's why I said three sets of five once a week. Yeah, there it is. There it is. There's, those hamstrings are so fast twitch. Yep. Yep. Good job. They're gonna be sore for like the next five days. <laughs> I did a this, set of five this, before this. This guy has an athlete mindset. Now I'm pissed on this. Yeah. Wow. Get nice. Up. Yeah. Freak. You don't need some like multi thousand dollar machinery to get world class at something like that. That's what I think is so cool. So I know athletes that have gotten these for their garage and now it's like totally changed their, their knees and their career. So. Dude, way to work, you're a freaking savage. One more. So we worked that, and then we worked that, and now we're gonna work that. We put these together, and now that now that flexion, that flexion is strong, and you can, you can. Be, I'm teeth kicking people through the cage. <laughs> wow. He was 43 and back dunking. He's unbelievable, super athletic. He makes these, he actually started selling today. So his name is Mr. Infinity. Because basically, like he, he never ages on the basketball court. <laughs> this allows me to strap to loads. You could have a partner behind you, or you can put something immovable. And so we try to get where we can do three sets of twenty, like as we go through this triple flexion circuit. Where we can do three sets of twenty. So this is half my weight. I'm about a buck eighty. This is ninety. And I'm gonna do twenty here. Finish through, finish through. Nice. We try to get everything where it's measurable. How many, guys, how many yeah. sets? Three sets of 20. Three sets. Yeah, the triple flexion, we should go three rounds. Gotcha. Okay. So that would finish off the leg day. You slide in, that way it's easy to get on. Kind of get it around that, that mid, yep. kind of around the arches there. All right. This would be wicked if you can get a second set of 20. There we go. One, nice, two. Three, four, five, six. Keep down for him. Really helpful after a knee injury because you stop sprinting. You stop kicking as hard. And so then it gets, those muscles get weaker than they're supposed to be. Good job. Five, four, three, yeah. Two, last one. Boom, good job. He just survived my, uh, my triple flexion routine. So. If you're in a sport where what matters most is how you go perform and being able to fight against someone pound for pound around your size, these are ways to get an advantage. They're not gonna win you any awards in the weight room. <laughs> no one ever said, bro, how much do you tip? Yeah. <laughs> it hasn't been well, it hasn't been said yet. Yeah, it's probably gonna get there. It's gonna get there because <laughs> you really get there. Well, I appreciate it, man. Like always. Guys, check out the podcast too as well. You got that out. And also our other video on YouTube. Where can they find you at? You know where to find you. Go Knees over toast, guy. Don't be afraid to send me a message. Subscribe, hit the notification, hit the like button. I'll see you again next time. Peace.